Hi, I'm Construction Gamer and this is just a quick Transport Viva 2 tutorial on how to import real world terrain height map data into the new um, Transport Viva 2 map editing tool. I'm going to go through the crucial steps that you'll need to do to begin with at the start of the video and then I'll show you some of the other features of the new map editor tool that Transport Fever 2 has to offer. So without further ado, I will show you what you'll need to do to import that data. First things first, you will need a height map which looks something like this. So you have all of the mountainous terrain, the higher ground in um, lighter colours, the lower ground in lower colours, and then your water is black, which helps to uh, really, this helps to define where the water is going to be on the map. What this needs to be, I'm editing this uh, image in GIMP but you can choose whatever uh, photo editor you need, you prefer to use but the important thing you'll need to know is that the image needs to be, the mode needs to be grayscale and the precision you want in 16-bit uh, integer. Um, just That's a really important step in order to make this map work within Transport Fever. So I've cropped this image, this is the north of England, this is the new map that I'm going to be working on for my new series. I've painted some of the rivers in, Just I've really exaggerated them in some cases just to make them stand out a bit more and we can work on that in the map editor tool itself. Now what you need to do is, whichever photo editor you're using, you need to export or save it. So I've got the name already, it has to be a PNG file you press, uh, yeah, I'm going to replace it just so I can show you the steps and then wherever it says uh, the colour you have to set it as 16 bit uh, grey like that grey there export that or save as and then that map should work if it's a PNG and if it's saved in 16 bit grayscale it should work within uh, Transport Fever 2 so this is uh, just exporting now I've already saved it but once you've exported or saved your image, what you need to do is you need to put it into this file here, which is Steam user data 189767229 and then 1066780 local and then height maps. Handily, on when you're on the Transport Fever 2 map editor, it does actually show you this address. So if you forget the address or you're not sure where your Steam folder is, it will actually show you on your uh, on the map editor itself, so you don't need to worry about that. So I've already got my um, height map in there. I've placed that in there, and we are ready to go. One of the things um, with this, I have scaled this up so it's uh, 8,000 by 8,000 pixels. In Transport Fever 2, I don't think the size of the image dictates the size of the map. Not like the old editor where you actually imported the map and you had to have a very specific set of uh, dimensions in order to make the map work. I don't think that the scale of the actual image dictates the scale of the map. So I'll explain that a bit more when we've opened Transport Fever 2. Okie dokie, so we are in the game now and what we are going to do is going to click on the brand new feature which is the map editor. Uh, which brings us up with this so we can generate a basic uh, climate vehicles and other things uh, so what we want to do is I want to go into settings and I want to select the climate I think is the sky and the weather and sort of how it looks uh, from a light lighting perspective I want to go with the temperate which is be a European uh, town names I want to be English it doesn't really matter uh, I'm going to be manually putting in towns anyway, environment and this will be the actual ground textures that you so dry, be like a deserty and then you've got your tropical, I want to get temperate again, vehicles European, save that and then what we want to do is select the tart size, the standard map size is very large which is on its own accord quite big anyway but I have turned on the uh, experimental map sizes, you do this at your own risk and I'm doing this at my own risk. Um, large is quite a big map but I want a huge map for the new series. Map format, these work in a portrait fashion so if you have a 1x5 that will be from north to south a very long and thin map. I want a 1x1 map and then seed, it doesn't really matter because we are importing data 
and then we just click start and it will generate a new flat surface with the uh, temperate base theme for us okie dokie so we are in the map editor now we have our temperate base theme and we have our temperate climate uh, it's just flat completely empty and devoid of anything you could if you wanted just start from the very from the scratch basically and edit the terrain and you could edit the entire map as you see fit but we're not going to do that we are importing some real world data you can also generate different height maps but again we're not doing that we are interested in importing that height map so we have the map that we've been working on which is a png file in grayscale and you'll see it's loaded here now we do have some water where there is supposed to be land that's because some of these areas were quite dark so the game has assumed that they were uh, underwater but not to worry we can uh, adjust these different settings to get rid of that water so the range is your base level for the land uh, which wants to be instead of minus 100 we want it to set it to minus 30 I've already experimented with this um, so I do know the figures for this map but each of these settings will be very specific to your own map and you can just play around with these so the water level we want that at minus 10 like so and then we have our height map the uh, the 300 figure there is the tops of the mountains so you can have really high mountains or you can lower those down a bit uh, I've just lowered those down just to fit within the scale a bit better uh, and obviously the water level is how deep the water is so uh, let's go ahead and import that depending on how fast your computer is it will take a few seconds or a few minutes to render that map uh, but you should be able to see it's starting to generate the terrain now and it's starting to render all the uh, render the base ground texture that's the word texture so that's doing that you can see at the very bottom here this is the directory that your map needs to be in if you've forgotten or if you're not sure this address here is where that height map needs to be for in order to load it so there we are it's still still generating some of the uh, the texture there but yeah, we'll, we'll do that for a few minutes until it's all nicely generated so there we are that is pretty simple actually how to import it uh, hope you found that useful what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to talk through some of the new features within the map editing tool itself so if you want to stick around for that please do if you found this useful please do hit the like button it really does make a big difference to uh, to little channels like mine okie dokie so we've imported our height map data now what we can do is we can completely transform this map and just fine tune it and detail the map just to make it look a little bit better if we want to one of the first and the biggest you know, changes to transport fever is the ability of us to change for us rather to change the actual um, coast so if we select the flatten tool and we click on an area uh, the where the cursor is the center of that will set that to that height and as you can see we are now editing the coast and changing that and like I said in the previous segment I've exaggerated the rivers just to make them stand out just so we can get the water height in place but now what we can do is we can just start to bring those rivers in if we want to make things look a bit re more realistic and just flatten out the coastal area as well so we've got a bit of a build plane on the lead up to the coast so we can bring that in like so and yeah we can just do that to our heart's content and then what we can do we can even smooth so we can make the actual approach to the coast a lot smoother you can see there it's quite abrupt and now we come in with the smooth tool and we smooth that right down I wouldn't say we could create beaches because it is I mean if you did if you worked hard enough you probably could create a beach there and then what you would do is you'd come in with the paint tool and let's go gravel um, you've got all these different textures that you can now paint directly onto the map uh, if we go with this gravel see what that looks like it almost looks like a beach just paint that into the river a bit and then if we zoom in yeah we've got a bit of a beach going on there you could spend the time really fine-tuning detailing the map to your heart's content uh, as much as you wanted 
like so and then yeah just smooth that's all the basic tools most people if you've especially if you've map edited with uh, city skylines you will be familiar with these tools even within transport fever themselves these are all familiar tools smooth that off one of the new tools though is the um, height map texture tool so what this will do if we come over to a mountain and we select um, desert noise 2 uh, set the strength to just somewhere about that and then if we just start painting it over if we press uh, put it down it should just start texturizing that mountain just so it doesn't look like a, a smooth bump we can actually add a bit of texture to it if you wanted to make things look a bit more interesting and a bit more realistic so you can really go to town with the detailing We've touched on the paintbrush tool which like it says on the tin just uh, paints the surface so we've got all the different textures we just paint those like so the paintbrush goes quite big so we just paint that area there and then we have the assets so we have loads of different trees and what we can do again is if we bring up the brush size we've got some European whatever they are um, strength we'll just reduce that a bit and then you can just you can paint trees all over the place make that even bigger paint even more trees uh, we do have some rocks can't paint those um, in one big go you've got to place these oh no you can't you're done <laughs> so I've just placed a load of rocks at random and you've got a few different rocks to choose from got some benches lights fences things like that I'm pretty sure that modders are going to be creating different assets for this so um, yeah I've got a few basic ones to choose from there uh, the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to add some towns to our map you can do this in two ways you can either use the tool which actually generates maps and uh, towns and industry so I've got 22 towns here and as you can see it's randomly placed placed 22 towns on the map same with the industries you can change that up and down and then once you click generate it will actually place all of those industries around the map where it shows you here but I don't want to do that I want to um, place the towns onto my map uh, individually so we have another button which is town and then what I want is I want the town to be quite small and then click down and then just place that and it will generate a tiny little build a tiny little town rather on the map uh, so I'm just going to place that one I'll place one here like so so these are two towns that let's say we're going to build we're going to obviously want to place a lot more but we do want these to be connected together so one of the things we do is bring up this new tool which is main connections and we have we should have these dots which represent the towns and obviously these will be all over the map and then what we can do is we click on one you see it brings this blue line up here click it to the other click generate and it should build a road between those two towns so you can see there it's just generated a town so if we've got loads of towns all together we want we do want them in transport fever 2 to be connected via roads because it's quite an important part of the uh, in, of the game this time so we will just manually go around connecting all the dots up and it will generate roads depending on the terrain like so and it will do the same with the industries as well I think the industries will actually be once you've connected up your towns and you click generate it will connect the industries to any of the roads which are closest to it so yeah there is plenty you can do you can really go to town with how the map looks you can see here I've got my uh, all the terrain in place now it's still generating a bit in places but once it's fully generated and you've zoomed in it will just finalize that texture generation for you as you can see this map really is quite big I mean it's not going to be to scale once it's finished but it is um, it's big enough I think uh, you will agree plenty to do on this map I think I've shown you all of the main features for the map editor and obviously the crucial part which is importing the real world terrain data I hope you found that interesting enough if you have please hit the like button if you've got any questions or comments leave them in the, uh, the comment section below I'm always happy to take any questions and try and answer them as and when I can so there we are I'm gonna leave that there 
for today. I'm going to say, until next time, bye-bye.